Hi everyone. In our last lesson, we learned how to prove triangles congruent. And then we used those triangles being congruent to prove that corresponding parts are congruent. In today's lesson, we are going to take that idea to the next level by not just proving that corresponding parts are congruent, but we're also going to draw conclusions based on those parts being congruent. So let's go ahead and get started with this warm up. In this warm up, I would like you guys to just complete this proof. Feel free to pause the video and try it on your own and then restart it to see how well you did. All right, let's go ahead and check out how well you did. In this problem, we are given that segment AC is congruent to segment EC. That is given to us. We also know that segment ED is perpendicular to segment BD. We're also told that segment AB is perpendicular to segment BD. And so I, whenever I see perpendiculars, I automatically know that those perpendicular angles, uh, I'm sorry, perpendicular sides form right angles. So all I did here was just mark up those right angles. Next, I'm told that C is the midpoint of BD. So since C is the midpoint of BD, I'm going to mark up that C, BC is congruent to DC. And now I need to decide how I'm going to prove, oh, this is nice. I'm just proving triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. And what I see here is a right, I see SSA, SSA, but I know that the only SSA that works is RHL. R represents that you have a right triangle, the hypotenuses are congruent, and a leg. So I'm gonna say that this is my R of RHL, my H, and here's my L, RHL. Cool. So I'm gonna write down my, I already have my given already written out, so I'm gonna write given. And then because I have perpendicular side lengths, which it looks like the given is split for this one. Look at that right there. The given is split. So since I have perpendicular lines, I'm going to say that angle B and angle C, I'm sorry, let me take that back. That's D. Angle B and angle D are right angles. So I'm going to say if you have perpendicular lines, then they form right angles. Now, you don't want to say that the angles are congruent. That's not what the R of RHL means. R of RHL means right triangle. So what we want to say next is that since we have right angles, we can therefore say that triangle ABC and triangle EDC are right triangles because that's the R of RHL. So, so far I have an R identified and I guess the AC and EC, they were the H of RHL. So I already have an R and an H identified. But my if then statement is if a triangle has one right angle, then it is a right triangle. So if a triangle has one right angle, then it is a right triangle. And that is the R of RHL that we have to talk about right triangles. We don't necessarily have to say that those right angles are congruent because that's not how we're proving triangles are congruent in this problem. Next, we have our given. We're told that C is the midpoint of BD. So that means that BC is congruent to DC. And we write that because if a um, point is a midpoint, then it divides a segment into two congruent segments. And finally, 
that's my L of RHL. I can say that these two triangles are congruent by RHL. Now, you should realize by now that proofs can stop at congruent triangles. That's what majority of this unit was all about, stopping at congruent triangles. You can also go further to prove an additional corresponding parts are congruent. That's where we, what we did in our last lesson, where we worked with C, P, C, T, C. But you can even go further. You can go even further, as you will see. You can use those corresponding parts to draw further conclusions. So looking at example number one, we are told that AB is perpendicular to BD. So I already have that right angle drawn in for you. We're also told that BD is perpendicular to DE and that right angle is drawn in for you. We're also told that BC is congruent to segment DC. That's already marked in for you. We need one more piece of information before we can do anything because we need to prove that C is the midpoint of AE. So let's go ahead and talk about what other information we can come up with. And what I see here are vertical angles. I see that angle ACB is going to be congruent to angle ECD. So I see that we have two angles that are congruent to each other because we have vertical angles that are congruent. So now what I see in this problem is angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. I can prove triangles congruent by angle, side, angle. And those triangles that are congruent are triangle ACB is going to be congruent to triangle ECD. Cool. But I want to prove that C is the midpoint of AE. So if C is the midpoint of AE, what if that was part of the given? The first thing you would do is you would say, Miss Olivero, that means that AC is congruent to EC. And that's what we need to show somewhere in the proof. We need to show that AC is congruent to EC. And how can you prove that AC is congruent to EC? Well, if you can show that triangles are congruent, then that means that the corresponding parts of those congruent triangles are congruent. And if you can show that those segments are congruent by CPCTC, you can therefore draw a conclusion about midpoints. Here we go. So given AB is perpendicular to BD, BD is perpendicular to DE, BC is congruent to CD, that BC being congruent to CD, that is our side already identified. Next, we're told angle B and angle D are right angles, and that came from perpendicular lines. If you have perpendicular lines, then they form right angles. And this time, because we're not using RHL and we're using angle side angle, we would say that angle B and angle D are congruent. And that's because if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. And so I have two angles that are congruent. So, so far I have an angle and a side identified. And now I'm going to be working with those vertical angles. Angle ACB is congruent to angle ECD, and that's because if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. So there's my last A. So, so far I had an S, here's an A, here's my last A. Voila, I can now say that my triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. So now that I have my triangles being congruent, I now need to talk about the parts that I'm really interested in. And that part that I'm really interested in 
is AC being congruent to EC? That's what I need right here. I need these two to be congruent because if they are congruent, by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, I can now identify C as a midpoint. So I can say C is the midpoint of AE, but why? It's all about what came before. What came before was congruent segments that were cut in half by a point. So when it comes to midpoint, if a point is a midpoint that it divides a segment into two congruent segments is what we typically use. But this time, if a point divides a segment into two congruent segments, what we were given before were two congruent segments. If a point divides a segment into two congruent segments, then it is a midpoint. Then midpoint. We want that midpoint information to come second. So if a point divides a segment into two congruent segments, then it is a midpoint. And we just proved that C is the midpoint of AE. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next proof, example number two. In example number two, we are told that AB is parallel to DC. So I'm gonna mark that up with arrows. I'm also told that angle, or I'm sorry, that side length, side length uh, or segment AB is congruent to segment DC. So I'm gonna mark that up in my picture. So I know that whenever I see parallel sides, I'm gonna be working with alternate interior angles. So I can say that angle four is congruent to angle two because these angles touch the right angle, or touch the parallel sides. So, so far I see a side and an angle, side and an angle, and I need one more side. And that side is gonna come from the reflexive property of congruence, of BD being congruent to DB. And I'm flip-flopping the letters just based on the fact that I know that this angle B matches with this angle D, so I'm gonna be flip-flopping the letters. So based on what I see here, I see angle, side, angle. Angle, I'm oh, sorry, excuse me. Side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. So I'm gonna prove these triangles are congruent by side, angle, side, but I need a statement for these, um, a triangle congruent statement for these triangles. So I think I'm gonna call this A, B, D. would have to be congruent to triangle C, well A matches with C, D matches with B, and then B matches with D, so triangle C, D, B. All right, cool. So I've just proved, I know how I'm gonna prove the triangles are congruent, so now I need to look at what I'm trying to prove. I need to prove somehow that AD and BC are parallel. And I know that whenever we've worked with parallel sides, I am always working with alternate interior angles being congruent. So I guess if I know that triangles are congruent, then I can say that corresponding parts are congruent. And I could say that angle one is congruent to angle three. By CPCTC corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And if I know that alternate interior angles are congruent, then I must have parallel lines. And that's what I'm going to be saying in this proof. So starting off with my given, I have segment AB is parallel to segment DC. And I have segment AB is congruent to segment DC. And I write that because it is given. Then I have angle two is congruent to angle four, and that's because angle two and four are alternate interior angles, but what came before was parallel sides. 
So if I have parallel lines, then alternate interior angles are congruent. And now I finally have the reflexive property of congruence. But before I do that, what I need to identify is what I have. So, so far in statement one, I had a side, so I'm gonna check mark that. Then I had an angle in step two. And in statement number three, we're working with the reflexive property of congruence. So I'm gonna say that segment DB is congruent to segment BD. And I can now say that my triangles are congruent. Triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB by side angle side. Cool. So I've just proven my triangles are congruent. And now I can say angle one and angle three are congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So since I know that angle one and angle three are now congruent to each other, the only thing, our final conclusion has to be that AD and BC are parallel. And that's because what came before is alternate interior angles were congruent. And if alternate interior angles are congruent, then you must have parallel lines. We have one more proof and then we are done with this lesson. In this problem, we wanna prove diagonals of rhombus bisect opposite angles. That is, like I said, a, a preview as to what we're going to be heading into. I think I talked about that before in a previous lesson. Don't worry about that. I'm just more interested in the um, what we're given and what we're trying to prove. So here we go. In this problem, we are given that EF is congruent to FG, which is congruent to GH, which is congruent to EH. So we are given all of that information. And what we want to do is we want to somehow prove that FH bisects angle EHG and bisects angle EFG. So if I know that we want to prove that we have bisected angles, that means that these two angles would have to be congruent to each other. And we would have to say that these two angles would have to be congruent to each other if it bisects those angles. So based on information that I'm given and I want to look at these two angles and these two angles, I'm thinking that the triangles that we are working with is EHF and triangle GHF. So these are our triangles. This information right here of um, the angles, I don't know that yet. So I'm marking it up just to talk about what I need to prove, but I don't know any information quite yet to, to say that. So just based on what's given to me so far, I just have side links that are congruent. That's what, all that's given. And I can see that this yellow and this pink triangle overlap right here, and that is at HF being congruent to HF. By the reflexive property of congruence. So it's looking like I'm gonna be able to prove the triangle EHF is congruent to triangle G, HF. They are congruent by side, side, side is what I see. So then if I know that, if I want to prove that FH bisects angle EHG and angle EFG, then I need to be able to say that angle EHF would have to be congruent to angle GHF. 
and I'll need to prove that or be able to say that EFH would have to be congruent to angle GFH. And so that those statements are going to have to be in my proof because of CPCTC. All right, I think I'm ready to go with this proof. I think I have a plan. So here we go. We have segment EF is congruent to segment FG, which is congruent to segment GH, which is congruent to segment HE. So that is all given to us. And what I have here are two of my sides identified already. My last side comes from this orange that came from the reflexive property of congruence, which is right here, HF being congruent to HF. Or in this problem, I guess I said FH, but that's okay. Same thing. I wouldn't mark anybody down for having uh, different letters as long as everything corresponds. So this is the reflexive property of congruence. There's my final S. And now I can say that triangle EHF is congruent to triangle G. HF, and that is by side, side, side. So now that I have these triangles congruent, I can now talk about those angles that are now congruent. And I'm gonna write, talk about two sets of angles or two pairs of angles because I need to talk about FH bisecting two different angles. So I'm gonna start with these two down here, which is angle EHF and angle GHF. They are congruent to each other. And I'm also gonna say that the other angles up here, which are EFH and GFH, they're congruent to each other. And it says right here, if two triangles are congruent, then the corresponding parts are congruent. That's that if-then statement that I told you that you might see for CPCTC. That's all that that is. It's not, a lot easier just to write CPCTC. So which one am I looking for? I'm really looking for CPCTC, but I didn't want it to be super obvious when I was writing this proof for you guys. So now finally, since we have angles that are congruent, we can say that a segment has bisected them. So this is where we're going to want to go to our green sheet to talk about angle bisectors. And angle bisectors is located right here. This first one says, if an angle is bisected, then it divides a segment into two congruent angles. Well, if bisected came before, I would say that's fine. But bisect comes second. So instead, if an angle is divided into two congruent angles, then the angle is bisected is actually the best statement that we have because the then part, what came next, is bisected. So that is if an angle is divided into two congruent angles, then the angle is bisected. And that is the end of this proof, as well as this lesson, as well as this unit. Congratulations, guys. You did a great job. If you find that you have any questions over anything I talked about in this video lesson, please feel free to email me. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day.